near Washington, a giant Soviet bomber stands poised for flight. Her passenger, Soviet Commissar Molotov. He came for a week of conferences with President Roosevelt. Secretary of State Hull and Ambassador Litvinov are on hand to see him leave. In London, he signed a new 20-year Anglo-Russian alliance. Here, he reached understandings on opening a second European front. The war's best kept secret. Not until Mr. Molotov was safely back in Moscow was his visit revealed. Secretary Hull and Mr. Litvinov signed the protocol, promising ever-increasing supplies to Russia. A new working agreement between two of the greatest nations in the world. Grand Cooley Dam, newest monument to American engineering genius and a mighty weapon in the battle of war production. Today, the giant power plants, biggest in the world, begin to hum as for the first time the spillways begin to flow. A waterfall higher than Niagara, a million and a half gallons every second. The Columbia River, harnessed to irrigate a million acres of farmland, power to turn the wheels of America's vast new industrial empire of the West. At the White House, a Marine Guard of Honor for George II, King of Greece. Arriving by clipper from Cairo, he's welcomed to Washington by President and Mrs. Roosevelt. Cabinet members meeting the fighting king fresh from the battlefields of Africa. faces a barrage of cameras as calmly as he faced the foe. The world will never forget his nation's heroic resistance, nor his majesty's gallant stand. Today, he seeks war supplies for Greek forces still fighting as United Nations allies. America solves the problem of the home front. Mothers employed in war industries now leave their small children in nursery schools during working hours. Taught to live in a strange, new, ever-changing world, the tiny tot's work and play is carefully supervised. Mother's mind is free to work when she knows her youngster is receiving the best of care. Today, some two million women volunteers are enlisted in the nation's war industries. By the end of the year, there will be four millions. When evening comes, the youngster prepares for home. Her day's work done, mother stops by to pick him up. America safeguarding the health and welfare of its young, while mother helps win the war. The ferry command in action. American bombers arriving at a transfer point in Canada, aerial crossroads of the world. United States Army pilots turn the ships over to a Royal Air Force crew for the long trip overseas. Down the runway, outward bound. Canada, Britain, and the United States launching the greatest sky offensive the world has ever seen. A new technique in glider tactics of air invasion. The Army Signal Corps conducting the experiments. A rope is rigged for the oncoming plane to catch. how it's picked up without the towing plane having to land. Latest development in glider warfare. (laughs) 
America, land of abundance, learns to mobilize its waste, to save its scrap, to provide more metals for war. Tin cans collected in one citywide salvage drive total more than a million pounds. A 55 carload contribution to the United Nations war effort. When processed, these cans will provide 11,000 pounds of pure tin, thousands of pounds of copper, both vital metals in the production of armament. Somewhere in America's vast Midwest, where once stood a cornfield, the world's biggest aluminum plant is now operating to meet the increased need for this most vital of war metals. The Navy awards the workers the traditional E flag for engineering efficiency. Highest possible testimony that industry is doing its job speedily and well. So huge is the plant, motor cars hurry workers and parts from one end to the other. Humming 24 hours a day, the giant mill consumes huge bars, reducing them by chemistry, electricity, and metallurgy into aluminum ingots, which subsequently are rolled into long, thin, tough sheets of silvery metal. A mile of aluminum for the bodies, the wings, the motors of planes, geared to produce one and a half billion pounds a year for military requirements alone. South America now sends 75% of the bauxite ore from which this 20th century metal is made. When it comes to getting things done quickly, American industry stands supreme. America is winning the battle of production. America at war. In New York, massed flags leading 500,000 marchers in the greatest patriotic and military demonstration ever seen in this or any country. Flags of the United Nations signifying the unity of the 28 countries aligned against the Axis. Soldiers of Britain and women too, thrilling the five millions that line the sidewalks for the 12-hour procession. Princess Martha of Norway taking the salute as doughty British sailors swing down Fifth Avenue. The King of Greece, Philippine President Manuel Quezon, a nation anxious to reveal its ever-increasing strength. West Point cadets, future officers of the nation's armies, in battle dress, ready to take the field. Legions of colored troops, dramatic living symbols of America's solidarity, America's unity of purpose. Today, these troops march to the cheers of their countrymen. Tomorrow, they will be on their way to the far-flung battlefronts of the world. Tanks, mechanized equipment to give New Yorkers a sample of the weapons it takes to fight a modern war. For miles, for hours, even into the night they march. Workers in armament industries joining the procession, the home front organized for war. All America on the march flying the battle flag that has never known defeat.